What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This week we are in Las Vegas for an event with AMD. This is the RDNA 3 event. So there's a lot going on today and we want to head down. Josh is also in the background. Say hi, Josh. Hello. <laughs> Let's go see everything that's going on today. We're just about to go inside. We just got done watching the uh, keynotes with AMD, all the information that they went over. Let's go inside and take a closer look at all the GPUs. So two GPUs were announced at the keynote, the RX 7900 XT along with the 7900 XTX. That's the one that you're seeing right here. They're priced at $899 for the 7900 XT with 20 gigabytes of VRAM and $999 for the XTX with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which was actually a pretty big surprise to all of us watching. We're so used to seeing all these new generational GPUs going for around $1,500 and up. So it's nice to see that AMD aren't following this trend and sticking with the lower pricing to accommodate the more average consumer. What's quite unique about the 7900 XTX is that it's using a chiplet based GPU design, which has basically allowed AMD to one, keep prices low since they're cheaper to produce and two, make the most of different process technologies and apply them to a specific job. So for example, the new graphics compute die is using a five nanometer process while the memory cache die is utilizing the six nanometer process. The reasoning behind this is due to the maturity of the six nanometer platform, which is currently more suited to this particular use case. As regards to performance, we didn't really get any concrete benchmarks apart from a few graphs to highlight the improvements over last generation 6950 XT. They mentioned the 7900 XTX is up to 1.7 times faster at 4K, but we'll have to wait until we get the cards in for a review to run all of our tests. One of the things that AMD has really been focusing on this year is power efficiency. They want to make it easy for gamers to upgrade to the next generation of GPUs and not have to worry about about crazy jumps in power draw. Power draw on the 7900 XT is just 300 watts with the more powerful XTX model requiring 355 watts. So RDNA 3 offers a massive jump in performance per watt for this new generation up to 54%. The lower power draw also means it doesn't produce insane amounts of heat, which in turn means it doesn't need a massive heat sink. You can see here, it's actually really compact. So you shouldn't have any problems fitting it into smaller cases. You also don't have to worry about upgrading your power supply and having to deal with special adapters since it just uses two regular 8-pin PCIe connectors. So if you're currently using, say, a 6950 XT and you want to upgrade to the 7900 XTX, you can just swap them straight out. That's going to make things a lot easier for people. There's quite a lot of other stuff to go over, so I'll put some of the technical specifications up on the screen now for those of you that are interested. But moving on, another interesting move from AMD is the addition of the DisplayPort 2.1. Now, I'd say this is more so intended as a future-proofing feature. On the current DisplayPort 1.4, you can game up to 4K at 240 hertz or 8K 60 hertz. Now DisplayPort 2.1 bumps this up to 4K at 480 hertz or 8K at 165 hertz. It's a feature that I'm sure will become more useful over time as we see more of these high resolution and high refresh displays release on the market. I know a lot of people were disappointed that the RTX 4090 only came with DisplayPort 1.4, so the addition of the DisplayPort 2.1 on the new new RDNA is definitely a good move for AMD. They did briefly mention FSR3, the latest iteration of AMD's open source upscaling technology. Now this isn't being released until sometime in 2023, but apparently it offers up to two times more FPS versus FSR2. So we'll have to wait and see how it works when it does get released, but it's looking to be utilizing frame generation technology. And I'd imagine something similar to Nvidia's DLS 3.0. AMD also seemed eager to highlight their adrenaline softwares, totally unlocked experience. So there's no registration required, no logins and no account tracking. And again, something that I'm sure a lot of people will be pleased to hear. And another interesting addition coming in the first half of 2023 is AMD Hyper RX. This is essentially a one click solution for faster frame rates and lower latency and will work somewhat like a setting toggle within certain games. The idea is to make it a lot easier for the average user to just click a button and have optimized settings for each game rather than having to mess around with the individual graphical settings. I'm also interested to try out the new RDNA 3 media engine for productivity workloads. The AV1 
encode acceleration can apparently offer up to seven times faster transcoding performance. So good news for video editors. There's also going to be a new generation of AMD Advantage desktop systems available from companies like Origin and Main Gear. And with that comes things like AMD Smart Access Video, amongst other features unique to having an all AMD system, where things like memory accent between different components can be fully optimized. Release dates for both the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX is December 13th. So if you want to check out more details, we'll have links in the description. What do you guys think of the RDNA 3 launch? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and we will catch you in the next one.